Hey folks, I thought maybe we could um, turn our TVs off for a little bit, radios, whatever it is we're using to watch the election, and depressing ourselves one way or the other, or making ourselves really excited depending on your view, and I thought we would talk about bees for a little bit. It's November 4th, and hey Becky, uh, surprisingly, the bees are still flying, um, and that is really exciting for us. We are. Um, we came out today to take a look at the bees, uh, some of the bees, some of the hives, um, test them for weight, that sort of thing. You know, we had the colony in the background. We were checking it to find out how close to being. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I just made the mistake. I I just made the mistake of taking a look online at the uh, election results, and so I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go hang out with my bees again, and so that's what we're doing. Um, but uh, we came out, we took a look at the colony in the back that we were we're expecting it to to be done. It looks like there's just some robbing going on inside of it now, uh, but instead of trying to shake or brush all of those bees off. Um, we're going to go ahead and let them finish up what they're doing. We have gone down to, we were on a double stack. We have been able to go down to just this single stack. Uh, yeah, Sarah, um, me too, but that's not what we're here for. So, um, we can, um, we can always text about the election and, uh, talk like the vets we are, but here we're going to talk about bees. Hey David, um, show some action. Yeah, um, so my dad actually already got stung once this morning and Buddy, his dog, got stung twice. That poor dog, he is a trooper. Um, he can't, like, he he won't let dad come out by himself. He, he flips out anytime dad tries to leave to come to the bees without Buddy. Uh, I feel like Buddy actually, mm -hmm. <laughs> shut up, Sarah. Uh, I feel like Buddy actually, um, you know, believes he's protecting dad, uh, just by being out here. Um, and it's really kind of neat. Uh, but what's funny about it is we'll let, you know, dad will let buddy out of the truck, buddy will run around. Uh, you know, you got this big old field here. Sometimes there's some geese that hang out, out, out in one of these areas. Buddy sees those geese. He will tear off after those geese. He'll never catch them. Big old fat boy that he is. He, he's just, he's not a runner. Uh, so I say he runs after them. He actually just kind of, um, lopes after them. If that's even a phrase, if that's a term that can be used here, he just, <laughs> so he'll never catch the geese, but it's funny to watch him go, but he comes out, he runs, he plays, he does all his stuff. And we say, all right, buddy, we're going to work on the bees. Boy, it doesn't matter what he's doing. He turns, he bolts right back into the truck, climbs up onto the cab and then just lays down and waits for us to finish playing with the bees. Uh, no, Trevor, this is not our land. Uh, you'll find that most beekeepers actually just borrow small sections of somebody else's property. In some cases, they have uh, gardens or uh, uh, they're checking me out. Hold on, I'm going to back off. Like I said, we've already had uh, three casualties today, so I'm going to give them a little bit of space for a minute. But uh, sometimes they'll have crops that they want to have pollinated. Uh, and so we will use a section of their land and our bees will then um, naturally just pollinate not only their crops, but any of the surrounding, like, you know, we got a lot of hardwood here. And so those will have uh, pollen producing flowers on them. And so we get a lot of really nice resources here, though, this field looks as though it gets tilled. This is just a big um, garden for this guy. Uh, so it's a lot of different crops that he will grow here. And that's definitely what we are most interested in is the multiple crop options. Um, there's a thing called mono crop, which is just one crop. So, you know, you take your bees, you set them out beside a big cornfield. Well, primarily all your bees will get then is pollen from that corn. And what research has found, and it's been our experience as well, uh, what research has found is that um, 
with the bees surviving just on that, we'll you know, just say corn for now, uh, just surviving on that corn pollen, that's kind of like you or me trying to survive on just broccoli or just corn. Um, you know, it, it's not going to take long before you're anemic. It's not going to take long before your body is just starving of those nutritions, uh, that are nutrients that they need. So um, what is best for the bees is a multi-floral diet. Uh, and so we try to get them as close to hardwoods, as close to multiple bloom sources as we can so that they then um, are able to have that balanced diet, uh, if, if that makes any sense to you. Each flower produces its own pollen, which, I mean, sounds kind of duh, but it, it does. And so that pollen pro provides its own source of nutrients, uh, and the bees need all of that. So we give them uh, uh, lots of options. Mm -hmm. uh, David, you never got stung. Well, then we just didn't have you around the bees enough, buddy. Um, your next uh, next visit, we'll have to fix that. Becky, to answer your uh, honey smoking question, I haven't produced any honey yet. So, and I'm not I'm not going to go buy somebody else's honey. I really want to actually try that with my own crop. I kind of want it to be a unique to us thing. Uh, so, I, I, I honestly, I don't know. Um, based on the strength of our colonies at this juncture, uh, I would honestly say, uh, moving far, looking forward, uh, that it's actually going really well. We want these colonies to be strong. I'll go ahead and tell you guys a little bit of, uh, what we were talking about today, just so, you know, later on we can look back at this video and say, huh, well, that's what they were planning, but this is actually what happened. So that's beekeeping for you. So what we're talking, and that is, I mean, we, we will come in with, <laughs> sorry, I just read Becky's that's corny uh, joke, and I feel like she was using that when I talked about the cornfields, and that was, that was a very good dad joke, Becky. I, I liked that. Uh, I'm probably going to steal that. Anyway, uh, yeah, I definitely want it to be unique to us. Uh, but anyway, okay, so uh, plans moving forward is we want to take uh, at least eight of these colonies, uh, once we go into spring and we want to use them specifically to produce honey. Uh, that is, and we've got multiple bee yards, by the way. We won't have them all here like we do right now. We are doing this this way just to get us through winter. It's easier for us as the beekeepers to, get, uh, to come to just this one location to check on all of our hives uh, at the same time as opposed to getting done with three hives here and having to drive out to the other bee yard to look at those other, I, you know, after your second bee yard, second or third bee yard, you're like, man, screw this. I'm going home. I'm done. So for now, now when you're, when you're gathering honey, it's a different thing. You just can't wait to get to the next bee yard because you know, then you're, you're, you're working, you're, you know, all that kind of stuff. But, um, to check them out, uh, we try to keep them as close to each other as possible. And you, uh, and it also helps uh, each hive mm -hmm. kind of insulates the other hives from the wind, from the cold, that sort of thing. And then so you really only have to worry about the external or exterior uh, colonies. And you only have to worry about one side of them as far as insulation is concerned. You know, you get the backs of them and all that kind of stuff. But that's just a solid sheet of insulation that you put across the back. Uh, and so, you know, there are multiple reasons over the course of time as we get closer and closer into the colder months these front hives we will be moving um closer together um and so uh, kind of like we have back there in the back uh now we'll do the same thing up front here we have to move them slowly to get them close together because of course um you don't want to move one hive into the former entrance area of the other hive um and if you move their entrances too far then they won't actually be able to find that entrance anymore. And then of course you lose those bees. So we have to be real careful about how we uh, move the bees. Um, so let's see. Uh, fourth round of dandelions, really? That's the crazy thing about Georgia. I mean, it, it, things just keep blooming down there. It's nuts. Like up here in Kentucky, uh, we're going to get, we'll, there will be several, what we refer to as flows, 
Uh, and that's where the nectar is being produced by the plant and the bees are going to the flower and collecting the nectar, which is what they use to produce the honey. So well, there'll be several flows, but there's only one major flow up here. And so, and that's right there at the beginning of spring. So we've got to really be on top of things to make sure that we can get to those flows. Um, the other flows essentially just subsidize uh, the colonies. We don't ever try to take any of that honey, or at least we don't plan to. I mean, if we get some overflow, then yeah, we'll probably snag some of that, but we're only going to do so so that we'll have it for the winter so that we can then turn around and give it back to the bees. We won't actually take that for ourselves. We got one shot every year to get that, um, to get that honey. And for instance, this past season, we didn't get any honey because there was a, a bit of a uh, dry spell. It wasn't really a drought, but it was a dry spell and it was enough to throw the season off that by the time we got any nectar flow, um, it was too late for us to take it for ourselves. We even contemplated it at one point, at a couple of points actually, we had frames of honey in hand and talked ourselves out of taking it for ourselves because we knew that we would have reached that time of year that we need to make sure that we're providing for the bees. Uh, Anna, congratulations on the, oh, don't you sting me now. I'll back up, but don't you, uh, 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 I'll back up. I'm backing up. Woof. Boy, they come right at your face too. Uh, they let you know. Let's uh, give them a calm down moment and, uh, boy, she's still following me, little shit. Um, congratulations, Anna, on getting out of jail. Uh, let's talk about their food for a little bit right here. We have just this morning brought out these two buckets. We filled them again with syrup that is also loaded with the um, essential oils and the vitamins and minerals that they need for um, healthy living. So, uh, which is what they would get from natural nectar sources. So we try to give this, uh, when we give them this, the syrup sources, we try to give it to them as close to natural as we possibly can. Because what we want is for them to be as absolutely healthy as possible. Um, you know, water is great for you, for instance, but mineral water is even better because it provides... Uh, more that your body needs. So it's kind of that same concept for the bees. Uh, that being said, it was, what time is it? 12.12. 12. Eh, we got here at about 11.15, so it's been about an hour. Uh, and you can see, they were out here actually within about 15 to 20 minutes of us setting it down, but there was only like two or three of them. So now this is almost actually tripled in numbers at these buckets uh, I mean like it's it's really uh, from where it started this has been kind of an explosion of population here you can also see some yellow jackets in there oh, I can let me get the camera closer you can see some yellow jacket activity you're not going to have sweet syrupy things out and available without having yellow jackets on the premises so you just kind of have to accept that they are a reality um, but the numbers have tripled, uh, almost tripled, and I think that as time goes, the number will increase even more because what these bees are going to do is head straight back over here to the hives and say, yo, there's all kinds of deliciousness over here in these orange buckets. Um, now, they'll dance that out. They don't actually say that. This is not a bee movie, uh, Angie, when you're watching this, know that I just took another jab. Anyway, um, they'll... They'll give the directions, they'll give the instructions, they'll give the, they'll give samples, because those are uh, most likely scouts that are over there at the bucket now. So they'll give samples of what they have found to other foragers. And then those foragers will take off and go straight to the bucket. Um, you've heard the phrase beeline or the word beeline, words beeline. I don't know if that's hyphenated, uh, combined. I don't know. Anyway, but you've heard beeline. And you can literally stand here and watch. It's not, it's almost impossible to catch on camera or at least the camera that I have. Uh, the Jesse dance. Yeah, actually, uh, it's, a, it's a waggle dance and a figure eight dance. And each of those communicates um, different things. And the neat thing is that sometimes, especially in the springtime, you can come out to the uh, hives and you can sit and watch the porch and you can actually watch those dances while they are in action. And they legit, they, uh, they waggle their abdomens 
uh, or they, they do, they'll do the figure eight in a specific direction. And uh, what's, what's believed is like while their, uh, while their head is pointed in the direction of the nectar source or the pollen source or even the water source, while they're pointed in that direction, that's when they'll do those gyrations or uh, with the figure eight dance, they'll kind of like move in that direction in a, a more straight line than the cur Dang, man, they're already on my hat. Uh, yeah, girl, I hear you. Get away from my ear. We'll go back over here. All right, you jerk, quit. Um, so it's just, it's really neat because they, they're very specific in the way that they move. Um, and another neat thing, I've seen this a few times actually, is if a different scout bee has been out to that same direction, uh, to that same nectar source or similar nectar source in that area, she will oftentimes get in the way of, if, and if she, if she had a negative experience while she was there, such as a, uh, I don't know, a bird tried to eat her or whatever the case was, she'll actually get in the way of that bee who's trying to give directions and she will headbutt her. And that's her way of saying, actually, this isn't a good area. This is, this is a bad idea. You guys should go, so, you girls should, you know, go to a different place um, and, and get, get nectar from that source. Uh, so it's, it's just really cool how they communicate with each other. I guess if I go put my jacket and veil on, I can stand a little bit closer to the hives and not have to worry about getting stung on my face. Um, cause that's really all I'm concerned about. I don't want to get stung on my face. Um, cause that, uh, that sucks. So hold on just a second. I'm going to keep my camera pointed at the, uh, colonies because my car is a mess. Um, but yeah, I'll put my my jacket on and get closer to him. Oh, goodness. And for clarification, I didn't even have anything specific to talk about today. I just, I'm out here at the bees. We did some work today. And anytime I'm out here, I try to, uh, I try to get online and, uh, do a live feed for you. Um, so I'm loving the questions that you guys are asking. Have I missed any questions by the way? Let's scroll back up. Corny, not your land. David bragging about never being stung. Honey smoking. No, it looks like I got everything. Okay, cool. Um, so are there any other questions? Because I just went to a lot of trouble to get my jacket out. We might as well talk about something. It also doesn't help that I was wearing here. Let's do this again. I'll put this camera down because I got to zip my jacket up. We'll set it down so that you guys can see the entrance of the hive and just kind of watch them work for a little bit while I zip up. There we go. Now I'll put one hand in my pocket and they can only get me on my right hand. Good times. Um, Okay, so anyway, you can see here, this is the, the weak hive. This is the hive that's actually expected to, um, that, that we've decided isn't going to make it. Uh, and there's a lot of activity out here on the front porch. There's in fact more activity out here on the front porch now than there was when, you, uh, I don't know if you remember or not, but a couple of videos back we were talking and I happened to look up and I saw that they just weren't coming and going. Uh, and so we popped it open, we looked, and there was a population of bees inside, but they, in fact, never started really flying. Well, now you can see that there's a lot of activity. If you didn't know any better, you would think, oh, well, this is a good, strong, active hive. Nope. These are most likely bees from the surrounding colonies that have smelled the honey source in here, much like they, sell, uh, oh gosh, I pointed like y'all could see it, much like they smelled the syrup source over there at the orange bucket. 
And so now they've come in and they have found a weak hive and they are going inside and um, robbing it. They're, they're getting all those resources to take back to their own colonies. Um, excuse me. Uh, and so that's what's going on here. Uh, I am surprised actually to see, uh, not see yellow jackets or anything like that. Um, but whatever, that's what's going on. We could open it up. There's a lot of um, hive beetle, which is a big time pest and can in fact, in a weak hive, hive beetle can be responsible for the, the utter destruction. Because what they do is they get into the they get into the wax and they bore tunnels through it. And so the honey leaks out and all that kind of stuff. So they're just very destructive. Um, and so we are always taking steps. I mean, always taking steps to keep the beetle population to as close to a non-existent minimum as we can. Most of these colonies do not have hive beetles. That colony is inundated with hive beetles. So today, what we did was we took some uh, Swiffer cloth, put that up top. We got a beetle trap in there just in case the bees decide to chase the hive beetle. The, um, they'll, they'll chase them into that beetle trap. The beetle will climb down into it to get away from the bee and get trapped in the oil that's in there and then, you know, drown, which is great. Or uh, they'll walk across or try to walk across the surface of the Swiffer and then they get caught up in the fibers. And that also is awesome by our standards. Whatever we want to do, because what we don't want is for this colony while it's, you know, while, while it's being robbed and all that kind of stuff, what we don't want is for those beetles to spread into any of our other colonies. So we're taking the steps now to go ahead and get those things destroyed um, before they actually become an, an even bigger problem. Um, but it just goes to show you that any pest or parasite left unchecked will in fact um, run rampant in your hive. So we are on uh, constantly trying to be vigilant about um, very specific uh, pests and parasites. The Varroa mite is the biggest concern for beekeepers in that um, they're really hard to see until it's too late. So we kind of have to operate under the, under the idea that the Varroa, excuse me again, uh, the Varroa mite simply always exists in the hive. Uh, if you can't detect them, that means that your levels are within acceptable parameters. If you can detect them, uh, you got a bigger problem. And there are methods that can be used if you have that issue. Like if you've got uh, an infestation of Varroa mite, there is a way, there are ways to, um, to deal with that and not lose the colony but you have to detect them very, very early. Uh, and so we, we, try to, we try to stay up on top of it. Because uh, the last thing we want to do is get to spring and find that we have a Varroa infestation and then we have to use uh, the chemical, you know, the, the, the gases that we use to, to get them out of there to, to kill that infestation. It's gonna ruin the honey. It'll be great for bee consumption um but it we can't then turn around and sell that to humans i mean there's there are very specific certain times of the year that you can use uh some of those medicines um and then other times of the year you're just ruining your crop so we have to be real careful vigilant about that bees land on me regularly yellow jackets not so much I am not excited about that yellow jacket being on my hand. Um, one of the cool things about being a beekeeper is that you just kind of get used to insects in general. Um, and so they don't become as terrifying for you as they can be for other people. Um, you watch, <laughs> you watch a wasp fly in at a pool party and people just go nuts. Oh my gosh, it's gonna kill us all kind of stuff. And uh, the beekeeper just kind of sits back and, you know, and then plenty of folks don't flip out because of a, a wasp, don't get me wrong, it's not just the beekeeper. But the beekeeper sits back and is like, you know what, if you don't swat him, he's gonna leave you alone. 
I just, I really enjoy watching this hive. Uh, it is the most active of all the hives. And again, we've discussed that we believe that this is the most heavily populated of all of the hives. Oh, there's a dead bee on the porch. Let's see if we can't um, get her out of the, oh, girl. Dead or dying, but either way, get her off of the porch. Oops. There we go. All right. Uh, you don't want them to have multiple entrances. So we put that stick in there to block a portion of the entrance. And what was happening was there was a gap um, here in between uh, each of the two sticks. Oh, sorry, you can't see that. Sorry, there you go. There was a gap here. And so all I did was just press them together so that they've only got this one section that they actually have to guard from uh, predators, potential predators. Uh, okay, guys. Um, I don't know that I have anything else to talk about. Uh, if there are any questions, I am more than happy to address them. Um, but otherwise, thank you very mm -hmm. much for hanging out with me and uh, having some good questions today about the bees, good comments today about the bees. Um, and of course, oh, hey, Anna, um, since you're here, go back. Um, I've actually posted the video, the last video that I did, uh, I, honestly off the top of my head, uh, I can't remember the date. I'll, uh, I'll pull it up once I shut this one down and then I'll send it to you. But I actually talked again about the, the, the video that you sent me. Uh, and so I kept my promise the very next video, which happened to be the very next day, um, was when I did another Facebook live. So we went ahead and talked about that video then. I'll send you that link if you haven't found it already. Um, that being said, folks, my videos, once I get them uploaded to YouTube, they're extremely easy to share. Uh, literally there's a share button on each of the videos. I'm telling you guys this just in case there are a few of you listening that don't know how to share videos. Uh, I would like to be, uh, personally responsible for giving you that, that learning, that teaching about how to share my, my videos. So what you do is you click on that share button. And then it's going to ask you how you wish to share it. Now you can send it as a text message, you know, indivi you know, to individual people. I think you can do the same thing to Instagram. You can send it to individual people on Instagram, uh, or you could just, uh, you know, share it on your Facebook. If you do that, I'd love. I get notified, but I'd love it if you tagged me anyway. That way, people know how they can get a hold of me too if they happen to have any questions. You can also encourage them to reach out to me if they have any questions, uh, especially if they're local. If they're in my, you know, local for me, if they're in the Louisville area or the Louisville metro area and they have questions, uh, that'd be kind of neat. But otherwise, um, if, they, you know, if they're going to be interested in it, I'd, I'd kind of like them to not only uh, have questions for me, but I would like for you to encourage them to go to my YouTube page. Uh, which they can do, by the way. I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but they can go to that page from the link that you shared. Yep, they just click on that. And uh, then uh, just underneath the, the video, there's a subscribe button. Most of you have found it, and I thank you so much for that. Uh, but if you could encourage your friends and family um, to find that subscribe button and then click it, that'd be really cool too. Uh, I would love that. Uh, we can, uh, we can build ourselves up a following and maybe get enough numbers that I can start doing some YouTube live videos instead of the agonizing process of doing Facebook live, saving it to my phone, uploading it to YouTube, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so you just save me a few extra steps if we can get ourselves enough followers. Um... <laughs> That being said, in the most condescending fashion that I could find, uh, I hope that you guys have enjoyed my video. I really would love it if you would, um, seriously, if you would share it, if you would encourage folks to uh, find my page, subscribe to my page, like my videos, watch the videos, um, that would be really neat. As always, uh, I am trying to provide you with uh, good but fun information. I mean, I could... 
we could do this like um like school uh and um i could just talk through it um but i try to i try to be fun with it um i don't like being stung but i do like to be near the bees so that they're you know flying up near my ear and you guys get to hear me react to the idea that i'm about to get stung in the earlobe or stung in the nostril or something like that something crazy like that because i mean you know it is that uh exciting stuff that trevor was asking about earlier um but that being said i like doing these live because i can actually um talk with you guys uh and it's it's kind of a hangout time for us so i, I really enjoy that uh i'd like to be able to do that from youtube um but also offline want to hear what you guys are thinking so please don't hesitate send me an email to hunsuckerbees at gmail.com you can always send me uh, an IM through Facebook, or you can um, you can leave comments here, of course, because I I go back to these videos quite a bit. I like to actually what I'll do is um, I'll finish doing the Facebook Live, uh, I'll do all the upload stuff, and then right before I post it, I'll watch the video myself just to make sure I didn't say anything stupid. Um, you know, I'm gonna post it anyway. Don't get me wrong. But I just like to know if another beekeeper is going to come along one day and say, hey, man, you know, this thing that you said on this day, yeah, that was really dumb. Yeah, I, I know. Anyway, so, um, oh, see, look, Yellow Jacket just tried to get in, and uh, those girls weren't having any of it. Uh, you missed the really exciting part of it, but as soon as the Yellow Jacket landed, uh, about four or five bees, that's what actually drew my attention to it, four or five bees got on it and uh started biting and harassing so the yellow jacket thought better of its choices um but that being said you guys have a great day if you do have any questions you know how to get a hold of me um i'd love to hear them uh, i'm looking for i'm always looking for ideas for new videos like i said today i just turned on my facebook live and started talking um and i'd, I'd like to be able to address some of your uh comments or concerns or questions okay um, otherwise, y'all have a nice afternoon.